a suit and tie And get your hair cut way up high Get yourself a lawyer, son You're gonna need a real good one here is your lawyer, David Whiting, is in the studio, well-known Melbourne solicitor, and I have at this stage no lines free, one 777 So as you hear people say goodbye, you can call and give it another shot and ask David your question. Good morning. Good morning. News? Homework? Yeah, no homework. Nothing. Homework free. I sent you home with fantastic. nothing to do. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll see if we can fix that today. Yeah, sure. We? Well, yeah, yep. He just went home and he just made money instead. All right, one three hundred triple two seven seven four. Where shall we start today? We'll do any, meeny, miny, mo. Uh, Jennifer in Richmond. Good morning. Go ahead, Jennifer. Hello. Hi. Um, I... Uh and the beneficiary of my mother's estate, I'm entitled to a 40% uh, amount on the sale of her property. Uh, my brother has severely reverse mortgaged that property. And what I'm wondering is whether I can ask him, he is the executor, for uh, statements um, of the reverse mortgage uh, if I'm considering contesting. Uh, Jennifer, start at a different point. I take it your your brother was also your mother's attorney? Uh, executor? I don't no, know no, about no. attorney. So what will... Uh, the reverse mortgage is where you make an application for a drawdown loan. You take money yes. as and when required. Um, yes. The The question will be who put the reverse mortgage in place and what happened to the proceeds? And he it, did. No, and no, he no, 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 he didn't. It unless oh, he okay. had your mother's power of attorney. So it mm -hmm. was done by... It, your, your mother either signed the mortgage and signed the loan agreements, or your brother did. Now, if he was your mum's attorney, then it is possible for you to make an application to VCAT for an order that he provide accounts for the period when he was the administrator, the executor for your mum, and not the executor, the attorney for your mum, so you can trace whether the money went to him or was spent on your mum. So that's uh, the I process. I know that it definitely went to him. And um, yes, but, I agree but the question, no, no, yeah. Jennifer, it's quite possible yeah. that your mum gave your brother money. She what did. we're really talking about is a situation where your brother may or may not have uh, used his power of executor as as attorney for his own benefit and that's what you're trying to chase so if your mum says i've got a reverse mortgage and i'd like my son to get a hundred thousand dollars then that's up to her but sure. if she if if uh, in a, a attorney in those circumstances decides i would like a hundred thousand dollars of mum's money that's mm. that's something that you can claw back okay um, it seems rather ugly, but yeah, I may need to proceed. So VCAT, you think, is the, the best avenue? Well, well uh, only that. if there was a power of attorney. If your mum did it, your mum did it, end of discussion. That's the end of discussion. Yes. Okay, all right, yep. but you can take issue or at least get, get some accountability if there was a power of attorney in place. Jennifer, good luck with that. Uh, Graham in Oakley, a lot of calls from Oakley this morning. Go ahead, Graham. Oh, good morning, folks. Um, my wife and I just discharged the mortgage on our house about <clears throat> 17 years ago, paid the bank out. Um, we, I'm not, I, we weren't aware at the time that we had to do anything more than hand over the money, um, but I recently obtained a copy of the title because we, have, we want to do some extensions on our house and under encumbrances, caveats and notices, it lists a mortgage uh, with a big long number to uh, one of the big banks. Um, does that mean that we have failed to notify the land office or something to Graham, the discharge? You've the got mortgage? to distinguish between reducing the loan balance to nil, that is paying paying it down to nothing, and yes. obtaining a discharge of your mortgage. Now, twenty years ago, most people simply gave the bank the money and stopped. Yep. Uh, requesting a discharge from the bank is an extra step you need to follow. Right. Okay. So, if you tell me that you've, if you've got evidence that you went to the bank and paid for a discharge, the bank will fix the problem. If you don't have that evidence, then the bank will say, "Thank you very much. We now want you to discharge the mortgage," and they will charge you a fee, and there will be a land registry fee and a PEXA fee. You will have, um, 
You've told me it's one of the big four, so don't worry about that. So they'll be helpful. It's where I, I had one last year where the lender was a, was a 30-year-old mortgage and the lender was Bank of Melbourne. Bank of Melbourne back then was a separate legal entity mm -hmm. to the Bank of Melbourne that exists today, which is a trading name of Westpac. And going into a Westpac branch and trying to procure a discharge of mortgage for someone where you didn't even have it listed as a customer was quite difficult. Okay. So that okay. the best that right, got that, that grant? So I go to the bank and say, here's a copy of the mortgage I want to discharge. Well, here's, a, here's evidence that you've got a mortgage I want to discharge it. Good Thank luck, Graham. Thank Bye. you. Thanks so much. Uh, Glenis in Sunbury. Glenis, what's your question? Go ahead. Oh, good morning. I contacted a lawyer on the 26th of June to prepare my will. Um, all this has been done by an initial phone call and then email. Um, she sent me a draft copy of the will. Um, we've made some amendments and um, that's all fine. Um, so I haven't heard from her since the 14th of July. Um, I sent an email on the 8th of August you know, saying, what's going on? I'm ready to sign. Um, no answer. I phoned her on the 24th of August um, and left a voicemail. I haven't had any response to either. Where, where am I at now? Right, you're still waiting to for an engagement from your lawyer. So why... Does, is the lawyer around where you are? Or, or further, uh, somewhat local, further yes. afield? Yes. Why, why don't you... Is no, it, no, she, why would you just not knock on the door of the office and say, can I make an appointment to sign my will? Okay, yep, yep, that's and, fine. And that I'll will wait. tell you where you're at? Yep, yep. Uh, no, I mean, do do I think the, the response time is pretty slack? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, the first time. But, but uh, no, I, it happens to all of us, Glennis. Um, but I would contact the law firm and or just turn up and say, L I haven't heard from you, you don't respond to phone calls, can I make a time to sign my will, please? Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck, Glennis, and call us back if that doesn't work. Uh, just a little update. The Premier and Daniel Andrews and Dominic Perrottet, the New South Wales Premier, are holding a joint press conference at half past 11 to make a major health announcement. Remember a few months ago, they also held a joint press conference where they made a major announcement about early childhood education and joint funding initiatives. So this is... um. This is turning into some sort of cross Murray detente that is really confusing me, David. What do you? I don't like. I don't like it. You know, two separate political camps. Stop it. Stop okay, getting along. Okay, it's almost like an alternate government. Really, it really is. It's yes. just spinning my head. Mm. And also, not that I'm encouraging you to make any channel change whatsoever, but I think we've got a tennis match coming up at half past ten that might oh, uh, okay. that might that might uh, feature a couple of very high profile and highly entertaining male tennis players. One of them might be Nick Kyrgios. Uh. But that's coming up in America too. But right here, right now, you can ask David Whiting a question. Susie in Black Rock. Susie, what happened to you? Good morning. Oh, good morning, everybody. Um, look, I rolled an ankle uh, on a footpath uh, due to a sunken Telstra pit. Uh, Bayside Council reported to Telstra to be rectified, which they did. And uh, the outsourced claims company has denied negligence, liability and... Um, I have out-of-pocket expenses, uh, osteopath and GP. But what my other concern is, David, is that um, they don't... Uh, the, the outsourced claims company do not take um, uh, witness statements from family and friends, and I did have a witness. Uh, well, if they've denied the claim, what's the point of taking a statement from someone who's not going to make a difference to the decision? Uh, Susie, well, I, I would be going back to council and I would be asking council how often and when they reported the sunken Telstra pit to Telstra. They, right. It's not, it's, uh, you know, if, it, if the pit sank yesterday and you twisted your ankle this morning, sorry, bad luck, right? Uh, on the other hand, if it was reported three times in the last three months, then I'm with you, but you would, then your claim would be against the, would be against the person who put the pit in. The individual right. person? No, no, the, the, the organisation, the so Telstra and Telstra's contract. And the claim would be made where? Uh, depending on the level of damages, it would be at the magistrate's court. But but you're looking at... you. I wouldn't have thought that your claim would be, to be brutal, Susie, worth much more than the cost of the medical expenses you've incurred. Correct, David. Yes. But I'm looking at the principal. 
Okay. Principles tend to be expensive, Susie, but <laughs> yes, I would be... Indeed. I think if you want to take it up with Telstra, your evidence has really got to be uh, not that, they, that it sunk, but that they knew it had sunk and forgot to do or neglected to do something about it. Susie, how bad right. was the ankle? Pardon? Oh, no, what's, oh, it's getting on six weeks now. I've um, got to have an ultrasound this week. So it, it's manageable, but I'm unable to go for, for long walks or even short walks. Okay. okay. All right. Well, good luck with that one. Uh, Craig in Croydon Hills. Hi, Craig. How can David help? Yeah, yeah good, thanks. Um, I've received a letter from a, um, a legal firm, and the, the basic issue is that um, there's a driveway next door, uh, which is not a, was not approved by council, um, we've got cypress trees that have been here for many years that's caused damage to that um, driveway. <coughs> um, so the neighbour says that we should be paying for um, to, re to remove the driveway um, from her property because the council um, said it's not a legal driveway, but they haven't instructed her to actually remove it, but she wants to remove it and she wants us to pay for the cost of removing it. Why does she need a permit for a driveway, Craig? Um, well, the thing is, that the the width of the dry, of the property doesn't allow um, two driveways. This is a secondary driveway, and the other thing is that no, um, no, no. My question: there'll be an issue in the planning scheme about what she needs or doesn't need, or is a, um, a, about. Well, but my question would be: I don't think it would be necessary. It's certainly necessary to put in what the law calls a crossing. Uh, so where you cross the council land to get to the road pavement, you need a permit from council for that, so it's a crossing permit, and to break and remake the kerb at that point. But that's not the same as whether or not I need a permit from someone to put down some concrete or some uh, toppings to make a driveway. I don't believe that you do, but your planning scheme might indicate otherwise. Yeah, well, the council have said that... Um the driveway doesn't meet their technical requirements. The driveway, if you do put a driveway in, it needs to be concrete, not ash asphalt. And that's what we're sort of saying. Okay, the no, but, but, but Craig, them. different question. Uh, let's move it to your issue. My yeah. problem is they are your tree roots in their property. So you, they might, they might be beautiful trees, they might be on your property, but you don't have the right to allow your trees to extend into their property. So the issue is not whether the driveway is legal or illegal, but the encroachment of your tree roots into their property. Right. So that's the issue you need to deal with. But oh, the fact okay. they may have been there before the neighbour moved in, they may be all of those things, they're still your tree roots and there's still an encroachment. And they're still over the boundary line and yes. no longer how they've been there. And the, and the boundary line is sacrosanct. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we've since removed the trees. Um, you have? Yeah, yeah, we've since removed them um, to stop any further damage, but we weren't sure whether we're responsible for um, you know, paying for Craig, her to you fix may the well be, but it then comes down to a question of what's the value that your neighbour's going to put in chasing you for the issue. Yeah. All right, now you might try and come, come to a deal as to an amount. Right. Because it's indisputable at this stage that your trees caused that damage, correct, Craig? Um, yeah, that, that's correct. I mean, okay. it's, it's pretty obvious they've got reports. I mean, it, I tried to say initially when I first wrote to them that um, that the driveway wasn't fit the for the purpose. You know, if it had been well, a proper driveway, it would have withstood the test of time. Well, uh, it would, but then, you know, the question then becomes is, was the driveway adequate if it wasn't adequate? Well, it may have been adequate if you hadn't had tree roots. That's right. Right. <laughs> and if there's tree roots over the boundary, that, that's it. Yep. Craig, um, thanks for calling in and uh, good luck for that. Uh, Elizabeth in queue. Hi, Elizabeth. How can we help? Uh, yes, I just wanted to make a question about consumer law um, in regards to buying a watch recently. Yes. So uh, I bought a watch and the face fell off. Now, the company mm -hmm. told me I had to wait until I, I had to take it back send it to Perth and get it repaired. They said they would send me a special box. I had to take the face off and uh, sort of dismantle the watch to send it over there. Uh, I waited a couple of weeks for the box, but it never came. I rang them up again and they said, I'll oh, get your own box. This went on for weeks. So I got fed up and I read the consumer law schedule and it said, if there's a major fault, you can take it back to the supplier, not the manufacturer, yes. and they have to replace it. So I went to the supplier and they gave me the same runaround and uh, they said, I, I go there at nine. They said, you can, we'll book you in with the Genius Bar at two. I said, fair, fair, 
are you kidding? It doesn't take a genius to see the watch is bung. Yes, said, but it might no, take a I genius to fix it, Elizabeth. Yeah, to put the face back on. Uh, Elizabeth, <laughs> if you're not getting the answer that you want, you can go to Consumer Affairs. You well, can go to VCAT, but I've, they've got enough referrals yeah. from me for this week, so I would be, <laughs> I, I would suggest that you... Yeah, no, mean, no, no, but the point is, well, as soon as I said I've got rights under Australian law to get a new watch, they gave me one straight away. So the problem is... They're, they're fudging it, as far as I can see. They're so, pretending so hang on, so you, don't, you don't have a problem now for David to solve? No, but I wanted to know, are they breaching Australian law? And if so, how are they getting away with it? Uh, the Australian law gives you a series of rights. If someone doesn't ask for their rights, I don't have to tell you what they are. Let's talk to Jane in Coburg. Jane, good morning. Huh, hello, I've got a boundary problem. Yep. Yes. But nobody seems to have picked up the problem a family relative has purchased a house that's on a third of an original property, six years old, and it has title to 143 square metres. Yes. The property is built boundary to boundary, and the house next door to it, which is actually built... Well, the house next door to it is the original house. Okay, so then the somebody serv- carved off a piece of land... And there's now been a house built on that new parcel. That's it? Yep. However, the council plans have all the drawings for what's there, so there's no problem with council. Council agrees. So the building's okay. The question is whether the building's in the right place or not. Um, The question is what does the family member do about the fact that they're paying rates on about 20% more land than they've got. They own 20% of the original property on title, but the title doesn't match what's there. Uh, Well, what they own is what the title says they own. I can't work out... So they own a much bigger property. No, no. Uh, You're telling me that six or seven years ago there was a subdivision done and a separate title created for a separate parcel of land that your Mm -hmm. relative now owns. Mm-hmm. Your and and I take it that the house that's been constructed is entirely within that parcel of land, that's but they right. don't have as much yard as they might otherwise have. Um, that sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds yes, right. Yes. yes. Then uh, they would be entitled because until six years ago they would have all been in the same ty- in the same area of land. Your friend, your relative, doesn't have any adverse possession issues. And it's a question of going to the neighbour and say, I found that the fence is in the wrong place and needs to be here. I want to move it, please. And Uh, then you look at fencing issues. It would be, except that the fence, if the fence was moved to where the boundary is, you'd have to demolish um, half a metre of the rear of the house. Of the house we now own or the house next door? No, the house, the the original house. Yes. So the, the that, title Jane, boundary Jane, extends in. Mm-hmm. That's their problem. Okay. All right, so, what, so, so the, at that stage, we then start some negotiation about whether we move the boundary a little bit and whether there's some compensation payable. All right. Okay. Doesn't the boundary just have to be resurveyed in this situation? No, because imagine if you like that, uh, let's say, let's pick your house. Uh, somebody agrees to buy your backyard mm. and and you sell you sell it yep. and you put the line as to where you think yep, it yep. ought to be you get the survey done in this particular case the they're occupying less than they're bought from you so they've and what Jane's now come along and says whoops well the fence is in the wrong place but who whatever whoever did the survey has, has knocked off your sunroom yes sure but it's more about the payment of the of the the rates that's bothering you Jane Oh, well, there's payment of rates, but also if you work out that um, square metre of land in Coburg is worth, I don't know, some money? Yep. Yes. Then there's 25 square metres of land that should be worth I, some I, money. I think, Jane, what you're really talking about is there needs to be a resurvey, there needs to be a realignment of the boundary, somebody needs to pay those costs and somebody needs to buy the area of land back from your relative. Mm. All right, Jane, we wish you all the best with that. Uh, Eric in Geelong, I think you'll be our last call today. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, yes, Virginia and David. Um, I have a trouble with uh, constant uh, dog droppings on my nature strip. Mm-hmm. If I find out who or what dog and who it belongs to, uh, 
have I got every right to pick up said droppings and uh, leave them at their place when I uh, work out Gee, where Eric, you're keen. Eric, are you going to put surveillance on the dog, are you, on the, on the, uh, the front nature strip? Well, I, I can see what goes on often. Okay. Uh, and, Eric, uh, Eric um, it's not on your property. Yeah. It's on the nature strip, so it's on council land. Even though you may look after it extraordinarily well, it's still someone else's. Um, the answer would be is that it's unlawful for them to do the dropping or for them to allow their dog without picking it up, but it's just as unlawful for you to pick up the dog, dog droppings and put it on their property. So you might follow them for the purpose of working out where the dog came from and having a go and talking to the bylaws officer at the City of Greater Geelong, but but you're committing another offence at the same time as you they are. Are you, by transferring the poo? Yes. Right. Yeah, I thought it may be, but... Uh, well, would, you, would, you, would you consider, if you saw it happening, would you consider, and would you advise, David, going out and having a very polite word with the owner of the dog who's allowing it to remain in place? So there's no reason, Eric, why you couldn't go out and take a picture of them and say, I need this for the bylaws officer. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, okay. they, they might get grumpy if you do that. I'm sure they'll get grumpy. Yeah, okay. So right. just, well, but grumpy. the answer will be, I never You're have gr- to do it again. <laughs> well, I don't want two grumpy people having yes. a go at each other on their front nature strip. So good luck with that. It is a constant problem. Yes. Uh, well, I think we may have to leave it there. But um, oh, no, why don't we just fit one okay. quick one in? Because yeah. I, I know that I, I know that Paul in Karen Downs has been waiting for quite some time. Paul, I'm sorry to speed you along, but can you be brief? Go ahead. Um, yes, in, uh, thanks for taking the call. In March, I took delivery of a new camper van. Um, on the back of it, it comes standard with a step so you can get in through the barn doors. I also asked for an add-on, which was a tow bar, but... I can't use the tow bar because it comes out where under the... You uh, can't use the steps, is that right? No, I can't use the tow bar. Because because of the steps? The tow tow bar is under the step. Yes, understood, yes. And you can't get an extension. Uh, Maybe they were an old type of uh, tow bar. What do you want Uh, to do, Paul? I understand the problem. What do you want to do? Well, I want my money back. It was $900-odd. I'm with you. I'm with you. The answer is they've given you a non-functional tow bar. They should have told you that they could fit it, but you could never use it. Ask for your money back. My view is you can have it back. And if if they say no, you can't, or too long... Oh, that's another job for VCAT. That's another job. Is VCAT the only port of call here? No, no, you go to the magistrate's court. It's going to cost you more than $900. I mean, before you get to VCAT, there's anything else. Yeah, just you write them a letter as saying, I've got rights under Australian consumer law. You've told me a product... You've fitted a product on the vehicle that I can't use. Take it back. And you would have known that at the time you took my order, and certainly at the time you fitted it, Mm -hmm. fix the problem. Okay. The the other issue with it, it doesn't have a compliance plate on it, um, which tells you how much you can tow or how much. It doesn't the ball matter. It's going back. You, it's no good to no, you. No, but anyway. we're only dealing with a tow bar. You then would be talking to. So it's got no compliance plate at all. It will have a. No. Oh, so this is a camper van that was fitted to a vehicle. Yes, it was a brand new vehicle. And it was fitted out brand new. Yes. Uh, and I wanted a tow bar. Yeah, understand, yeah. but but okay, it may well be. So I would be talking to the manufacturer about, not the dealer, but the manufacturer about what the tow capacity is for that vehicle and how you can evidence it. Okay. But if you're never going to use the tow bar, it really doesn't matter much, does it, Paul? Exactly, that, and that one's going back. Uh, Paul, good luck for that, and good, great to see you, David. See you, David Whiting. We didn't send him away with homework either this time. No, no, he's, doing well. he's getting off scot free, and I don't like it for all the massive amount of money we pay him to come in and do this free of charge.